The aquarium commercial was originally designed for high load waste water ponds, but it's also commonly used in irrigation ponds that also need aeration, uh, especially without spray drift. This unit doesn't create spray drift. So if you're using reclaimed water in an irrigation pond situation and you don't want the risk of potentially pathogenic uh, water spraying her out on your golf course, for example, they're a great use for that as well. They replace large power hungry aerators, some of the ones that have been in sort of treatment plants since the 80s and 90s and the reason they're good at replacing these units is because they're small lightweight and modular so that means that you can have the same amount of horsepower uh, or kilowatts in a pond but spread that out in amongst multiple units and that means that you can turn multiple units on and off you can have all of them running less of them running based on your need and your power consumption uh, they move a hell of a lot of water. The two horsepower unit moves around 4,600 litres per minute and then up to the, the five horsepower units around moves around 8,500 litres per minute. So they move a truckload of water. Uh, they're not just a, an aeration tool, they're also an excellent mixer and that's very important in wastewater treatment ponds, in uh, you know wastewater ponds, abattoir ponds, this sort of thing where you've got a high organic load. It's no good just getting oxygen in the water, you've got to actually move that oxygen around the pond. So this thing is a really outstanding mixer as well as aerator to get that oxygen rich water uh, around in the pond. Uh, they're available in two horsepower, three horsepower and five horsepower in both single and three phase. And we can do pretty much within reason and any cable length that you require. So let's have a look at the unit in a little bit more depth. Here we have the underside of the unit. You can see that the propeller is protected first of all by this uh, cage, this stainless steel cage, just to stop any large debris from getting in there and damaging the, uh, the prop. And the prop itself is a 316 grade uh, stainless steel, very well manufactured, precision engineered. And what happens with this unit is that the water gets thrown up, it hits this diffuser and then comes down again. So it's one of the reasons why this unit is such a good, not just aerator, but also mixer because that really fast, high flowing, well oxygenated water goes straight down and then goes all the way down for uh, layers and layers and mixes and, and, and moves the water around, which is very important, especially in wastewater. Uh, but so you, you've got the 316 grade uh, prop, you've got a uh, stainless steel uh, mount for the, uh, for the motor itself and the motor itself is a, a 316 grade stainless steel Franklin Electric motor. Franklin Electric are one of the world renowned motor manufacturers. The, one of the key things with this motor compared to other similar aeration equipment is that these motors are not oil filled in the sense that you don't need to uh, do oil changeovers or seal changeovers, which is very important because a lot of other aeration equipment that do use oil filled motors that require changing mean that they require regular ongoing maintenance. It's also a cost advantage because uh, the, the lifetime cost of the unit is significantly less because some of these oil kits and changeovers can cost you, you know, upwards of several hundreds of dollars to a thousand dollars or something like that to do a, uh, to, uh, to, to get the equipment, to get the parts, to get the labour, to actually do that maintenance. So some of that type of equipment might be a little bit cheaper to buy up front, but in the long term, it ends up costing you more because of the maintenance requirements. If we take a look at the float, it's quite a rigid unit. It's square in shape and that's for increased stability on the water. It's actually foam filled, so there's a little plug there where during point of manufacture, the, the float itself is not left hollow, it's filled with a polystyrene and that just essentially makes it unsinkable, even if this was in the highly unlikely event to be whacked with something so powerful that it's going to uh, put a hole in the unit, it's never going to sink because it's filled with foam anyway. Uh, it's also UV stable, it's got four tethers, one in each corner where you can tie off your, your ropes. Uh, or your anchoring materials and you can see here that there's a recess for the uh, the cable to run out. Another key point with the float is that on the inside, on the inner circle of the float itself where the equipment drops in, there's these anchor points all the way that, around that which are moulded into the float and what that allows you to do is that if you do get an excessive amount of uh, debris potentially getting sucked into the uh, to the main prop then you can put what's called a, a trash guard, an aftermarket trash guard, which you can make out of uh, metal, you can make out of plastic, um, inch by inch sort of mesh, something like that, just to stop shopping bags, big particles, that sort of thing from, uh, from getting into the unit. On the cable, this is what's called the drop cable. This runs out from the motor unit, which is out in the, in the middle of the dam. 
and comes back to the control box on the shore. The cable that, uh, that is used is a submersible rated cable. It just drops down to the bottom of the dam, runs along the bottom uh, and then up the shore onto the control box. So this is the female connector for the electrical quick disconnect. Uh, but essentially you're going to have the female connection running on, on your drop cable and your male connection on the piece of equipment. And there's a little notch in here which shows you where it's going to actually connect. It will only connect one way into this unit. So I'll just put it in there like so and push that up and then you simply screw on the locking nut and tighten that up like so. Now when these things are hand tight, just give it a little nip, that is actually watertight at that point. So you don't use any tools or uh, any anything excessive in terms of uh, tightening that, it's just not necessary. Uh, inside here under these four screws it's, it's a potted compound uh, so the electrical connections in there are uh, completely sealed off and potted and the potting mix that's used is a removable potting mix so you can actually pull it out and use it so if there is any servicing equipment, uh, anything like that required by an electrician he can pull that out keep this quick disconnect, do whatever he needs to do with the new wiring, put it back in again and then uh, repot it. These control boxes that we do are the Rolls Royces of control boxes. They've got over and under voltage protection, over and, over and under amperage protection, there's a tongue twister, uh, timer, automatic on off switch, surge protection, overload protection, uh, just basically every protection you can throw into a control box that's here. So let's take a look at it. First of all, we can see it's a uh, very well constructed metal box. You get your special key to unlock the box. And then inside the unit, we've got a wiring diagram that's there for the installing electrician, but more importantly, it's also there for electricians further down the line, if just in case you do run into any issues uh, with your power supply. So all the, the diagrams there makes it easy. You've got your main isolator switch, you're off on. And you've got lights here, resets where you can reset the unit if, uh, if there is a fault. Uh, here's your on, off, and also your manual switch. So the auto switch for the timer. You've got a secondary lock in here. And that opens up there. And inside here is all the motor protection equipment, the actual electrical uh, components of it all. There's digital screens here that you can be setting the amperage up and down and got your timer down here. And again, safety switches and all sorts of protection to keep the investment in good nick.